Good evening everyone and welcome all for the evening review of what happened here in Salbury for the French FIA Karting Grand Prix, the first round of the 2018 European Championship for KZ, KZ2 and Academy Trophy. I'm more than happy to have by my side the race director of the CIK FIA, Mr. Nigel Edwards. First of all, uh, Nigel, good afternoon, good, good evening, afternoon. wherever you are watching all over the world. So. First of all, Nigel, we're going to try, of course, in the next 10 minutes to sum up what happened so far this weekend. We have a lot of things to talk about, of course. <laughs> of but first course. of all, I want to know your feeling about today. You know, it's yep. been very hot and uh, with a lot of racing here in Salbury. You've been there, of course, watching all those drivers. Yep. Tell us a bit about your feeling. Mm, I, I think generally, I think it's been a very good uh, European Championship. I think uh, I do like KZ, I do like the KZ2 and I like the, the, the drivers in there. Uh, obviously, when we run the OK and the OK Junior, a little bit more uh, aggressive is probably not quite the right word, but but there's a little bit more in there. Whereas the KZ and KZ2 drivers, uh, they're definitely a little bit more mature. They get on with their racing, they enjoy their racing, and for me, it's really usually very hard racing. But the guys just get on and enjoy it, which is good. Of course, we had the academy, which is great. You know, for a new season of academy drivers, lots of new drivers here, lots of. Uh, I think for us as well, and I'm sure for the drivers in the first year, um, is um, at round one the, the, the difference in abilities. We've got some fantastic drivers out there who clearly you can see are racy, racy drivers and there are other drivers who are just learning their way through the academy. So a, a very good day though overall, I think, uh, you know, from, from my point of view as race director, no red flags, no slow boards, no medical requirements. So. It's got to be a pretty good day. A good day at the office indeed. Absol absolutely. For the viewers maybe uh, less familiar with the world of karting watching uh, this review, can you maybe shortly explain us, you know, your uh, job as a race director? Because uh, Chris McCarty and myself have been, you know, in the box all day. We try to keep, of course, our attention of, on what's happening on the track. You do the same, but from a different point of view, I would say. So you need a good eye to do what you do. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, the two things really, I think, for, for a race director, the, the, the main jobs that we have to do one is the safety of everybody on the track whether that's a driver a marshal or other people that are out on the track we have to be obviously cautious of what's happening on safety but again it's making sure that we have a fair race you know that's again one of one of the things that the race director will do very lucky here we've got RGMMC they've got a, a, a really good race center that we can call on we can review video evidence we've got people in there who can give me feedback we can actually carry out, if you like, penalties during the race, which is which is really good for me as the race director. But if we've got any doubt, we can always go back, we review the evidence there, and as I always say to all the drivers in there, whatever race it is, even though we may not see the exact detail from, from me on the gantry or, you know, one of the clocks of the course down on the track, when we go and review the evidence in RGMMC's race control, we can generally find out what happens. So. It's not about apportioning, you know, the, the the blame or, you know, sometimes there are racing incidents and people don't understand that. It can happen, you know, everybody wants to be a winner, so, you know, these things can happen. Other times there are things that go wrong and hopefully we pass that evidence on to the stewards and the stewards can make a decision, so. It's like a, a lot of things to do uh, indeed. A lot of things to do and, and those are the two, safety is obviously very crucial, you know, if we have an incident or whatever, we obviously want to make sure. Sure drivers are, are okay and get medical assistance etc but today and and for the whole weekend this week we've, we've been very good we've had no red flags we've had no slow procedures and really we had no medical intervention so for me that's a very good start but still fantastic racing on the yeah. track let's start right away with the kz category you know the cream of the cream yep. we had this weekend you know the best drivers uh, in the world in the karting world you know out there and you know we have one first big name we need to mention yuri pax from the netherlands you know it was the paul sitter yep. winner in the three qualifying yep. heats yep. and then you know he, qu he got quite unlucky in the final you know what a final we've had with the uh, you know the, the kz category 33 drivers in total ray pax was the fastest overall on friday and Saturday but still missed out in the final uh, to uh, actually Jeremy Iglesias yes so from your point of view we've seen fantastic battles in this race uh, with the top three in the case that Jeremy Iglesias Yori Pex and Marco Ardigo coming out from nowhere so you thought actually did you think that in the beginning Yori Pex was gonna you know no, actually I, I was I, I'm, I'm sure he'll feel a little bit disappointed I, I, I felt that he was smooth in the heats, he was smooth, he looked comfortable, he looked as though he'd, he got a little bit more in reserve and I thought, I thought he would walk the final to be honest, I thought it would be just a, a walk in the park on Sunday afternoon, but clearly it wasn't. Um, the other guys there, you know, really, really strong form, I think they, they pushed hard. Ardigo 
was consistently getting faster and faster and faster. I mean, he's a professional professional, so you know he's a guy you've always got to watch out for. But our winner, brilliant, brilliant win. Absolutely, you know, all deserved for Jeremy Iglesias, winning on home soil here in Fantastic. front of the French crowd. It's uh, worth mentioning that, uh, you know, the reigning champion, Paolo De Conto, wasn't that happy, you know, in the uh, first in qualifying heat. We thought that he could maybe recover some ground in the final, but still, the, we had so many mm. battles. Mm. The level of competition mm. was that high that even a guy yeah, like yeah. De Conto couldn't make it to sure. the podium. It, it, it may be a surprise, maybe not a surprise. I mean, uh, the fact is, you know, a guy with that ability, you would think maybe that he could, but whether he had some issues, whether he had some problems, I'm not sure. Um, he was there or thereabouts, but never quite had that last little bit that was ever going to take him to the front. So I think probably he went away and took as many points as he could from today and say, we better come back another day. So. Yes, yeah. indeed, because the championship is not yeah. that long, just two Super rounds, quick. so every round count, the first one being Salbri, and a good victory overall for uh, Jeremy Iglesias, Yuri Pex victory. was second, Fantastic. and Marco Ardigo, the Italian driver, on the third step of the podium. So, we won't have time, unfortunately, to go through all the names no. in this uh, category, so I suggest, Nigel, that we uh, you know, get into the second category that we have seen uh, on track today, the KZ2, yep. you know, 78 yep. drivers. Fantastic. You know, how hard must it be, must it be for the organization to have uh, that amount of drivers? Uh, it's not as hard as those guys being out on track and racing against 77 other drivers or 76 other drivers or 78. It's, that's a fantastic grid. Uh, obviously there's a mix during the heat so you do race against different people so the different abilities a couple of the drivers actually shone out through those heats but generally KZ2 I think is just a, a, a fantastic class and, and the thing that I like about it as well it's not just about youngsters young children I know they can race in the OK Junior etc but the KZ guys tend to be the real salt of the earth you know the, the the bread and butter type karting people so we saw some fantastic racing in kz2 absolutely an impressive performance from the french drivers you know with the top three at the end we had adrien renaud pierre loubert the pole sitter at the beginning of the week and then pierre uh, hubert petit uh, sorry in third position so who could have expected the drivers from local you know uh, local fantastic. one to be that that impressive actually. it just shows you it just shows you actually i think i think there is a little bit about that that people who come from the local track and in karting, sometimes people think, oh, I can, I can go to a track and do it. But for sure, people who have been here, raced here regularly, it didn't surprise me that we had a one, two, three, but it was a complete blackout, wasn't it, of, uh, of the podium. Yeah, absolutely. And well we done to those guys. It was great racing. Absolutely. We had a good match between the French and the Italian drivers yeah, who were there yeah. as well. Alessio Piccini and Riccardo Longhi were actually fourth and fifth, so Longhi was very impressive. Longhi was very impressive. I thought in the in the heat, I thought he would really... Yeah, he, know, had, really he had two wins, I think. Yeah, he did. He was fantastic. But he didn't quite work for him in the final. He was there or thereabouts, but never quite got the... Yeah, he got unlucky at one point he as well in the he final, did. so he it maybe have ruined uh, the end of the weekend, but still it was uh, P5 at the yeah, end. So it's a good result, and yeah. points in the bag. Uh, know, absolutely, you know, we're going to see what's, what he's capable of doing, of course, at the next round in uh, Lonato. So quite a good result for the French drivers out there very good result. in the KZ2. Already to the third and last category, the Academy uh, Trophy. We've talked about them a lot over the weekend, uh, yeah. Nigel, uh, with other officials of the FIA, of course. We know that over the last nine years, the Academy Trophy has been really one of the best and most beautiful achievements from the FIA. What's your view on that? I 100% agree, and I think that's been made even better over the last few years with OTK's involvement. You know, the guys that come here from anywhere around the world who are 12, 13, whatever years of age, young guys, with their parents, with their people. To see OTK, I think, and FIA working together like we have done this, what a fantastic platform. It, it, absolutely brilliant for those guys. And they put on a great show. You know, the racing was fantastic. A little bit in the, in the final, we got a little bit harder and there was a few yeah. issues there maybe, but, but generally, a brilliant job. Well done, Academy Drivers. Well yeah, done. we've had one hell of a final, if I must fantastic. say. So uh, the, the racing has been absolutely fantastic ever since the weekend kicked off in this category and the cream of the cream in the final. So we had uh, Maya Boya winner at the end with Kobe Powell's in second position. Sami Miketun, if the pole sitter ended up third, a good top three at the end Very for the good. Academy Trophy and a good result uh, in the end for this Spaniard. So. We need to wrap up already, guys. That was it for the evening review. Thank you very much, no Nigel, problem. for My being pleasure. with us. My pleasure. And this is the conclusion for this weekend. See you in Lonato. See you in Lonato.